Today we're talking about the six best stocks to buy in August 2021. I've researched hundreds of stocks, but these stand out to me as the best buys this month. Make sure to watch until the end because I'll be running through both the upside and risks while doing a deep dive analysis into each company. Let's get started. The first company on our list solves one of the biggest problems in the biggest industries in the world, and that is the digital advertising disruptor Pubmatic, ticker P-U-B-M. Pubmatic is a cloud-based advertising technology company. They develop and implement online programmatic advertising software and strategies for both the digital publishing and advertising industries. Their main software connects website, video, and mobile app publishers to ad buyers. The company's goal is to optimize the real-time buying and selling of ad space. Given that the global digital ad spend is projected to reach $455 billion this year, they have a valuable product in a booming industry. Before we talk about what makes Pubmatic an interesting investment, let's address a few risks to be aware of. First off, Pubmatic's revenue is highly dependent on the overall demand for digital advertising. Volume of ad spend tends to be very susceptible to economic downturns. As an example, during the COVID-19 pandemic, 76% of companies plan to cut ad spend. Companies like Pubmatic and their competitors saw revenue projections cut because of this. Another major risk to consider is data regulation. Pubmatic's business relies on their ability to collect, use, and disclose data to deliver advertisements. Any limitations put in place by the government or larger tech companies would seriously hurt Pubmatic's ability to optimize their offerings and provide competitive prices for their customers. One last thing to be aware of is that Pubmatic has been the target of heavy short interest over the last few years. This stemmed mainly from concerns of overvaluation, but just in the last month, the short interest percentage went from 45% to 31%, suggesting opinions of the stock's future are starting to change. With the risks out of the way, let's talk about the reasons to buy Pubmatic. The first reason would be the size and growth trend of their market. Digital ad spend is expected to reach over $500 million by 2024, putting it on pace to reach over a trillion dollars by 2030. Pubmatic submarket programmatic advertising is expected to grow to $33.7 billion by 2027. Their financials are also really impressive. 2020 revenue was $149 million, representing a 30% increase from 2019. The company seems to be on the same track this year. Their recent Q2 earnings report showed that revenue was up 54% compared to last year and net profit margin was up over 253%, reaching an impressive 11.28 profit margin percentage. Most software companies this size are not planning on reaching profitability for years, and it's even more unusual to see a company increasing both revenue and profit margin at this rate. This is likely part of the reason why Wall Street is starting to change their opinion about this stock. When comparing Pubmatic to one of their peers and major competitors, the Trade Desk, we can see that Trade Desk PE ratio is more than five times that of Pubmatic's, suggesting that Pubmatic is substantially undervalued compared to one of the main players in the industry. It seems like analysts are catching on to this. Right now, they are sitting at a medium price target of $52.40 a share, which represents over a 76% upside from its current levels. The stock is down over 35% in the last six months and down over 50% from its 52-week high of $76.90, meaning that it could be a great time to pick up some shares at a bargain price if you want to hold for the long term. Next on our list is a company that both invented its market and and leads its market, and that is Qualtrics International, ticker XM. Qualtrics is the first ever experience management platform. It combines survey and feedback gathering programs with deep analysis capabilities to help companies make decisions. They offer products that help with a company's four core experiences, customer, employee, brand, and product. They claim to have over 13,000 customers, including 75% of the Fortune 500. The company was bought in 2018 by SAP, then spun out just this February in a $21 billion IPO. Qualtrics cites a few risks to its business in the coming years. One of them being the fact that they are still technically controlled by SAP, which still owns majority interest in the company. This means that they still have the definitive voice with the board of directors and company overall, which according to the company could limit its ability to recruit high quality independent directors and employees. After almost 20 years in business, Qualtrics has not been able to generate consistent profits. And they note that investors should be aware that they may not be able to achieve profitability or maintain it in the future. Another important point is that the experience management market is only a few years old, meaning it is subject to a lot of change in the coming years. Given that Qualtrics' business is directly tied to the success of this market, 
The company points out that there is inherent risk with this, mainly the ability for the experience management market to continue growing and their ability to develop and maintain majority market share. So let's talk about what makes Qualtrics stock a buy. Despite the concerns about market growth, all projections point toward a healthy future for the experience management market. The total market is expected to hit $14.9 billion by 2025, with a compounded annual growth rate of 11%. Given that Qualtrics is both the category creator and category leader, if they are able to achieve and maintain majority market share, it would mean exponential growth for the company. Last week, Qualtrics announced a strategic acquisition of a company called Clarabridge. Clarabridge is known for its industry-leading text and speech analytics and has been winning awards left and right for the last few years. With the acquisition, Qualtrics now has the ability to layer best-in-class technology on top of their already popular platform, which should improve their ability to compete over the long term. It's also important to call out the company's impressive growth rate for their size. The company reported $754 million in revenue for 2020, which represented a 29% year-over-year growth to the previous year. The company reported $754 million in revenue. The company reported $754 million in revenue for 2020, which represented a 29% year-over-year growth from the previous year. Since their IPO, the company has smashed every quarterly earnings projection. Most recently, they reported that Q2 revenues in 2021 were up 38% year over year. Right now, they are projected to do over $1 billion in revenue in 2021, which would represent a 25-30% to growth rate from 2020. In terms of growth, there are only a handful of companies to grow at 30 plus percent through $1 billion in revenue, which would be a huge indicator that Qualtrics is here to stay. The stock is down nearly 20% since its IPO, despite beating earnings in consecutive quarters. But we see this as a common trend for IPOs, a short-term spike, a fall, then a rebound, as Wall Street gains confidence and the company proves it can beat earnings. Right Right now, analysts have a median price target of $48 a share, representing a 15% upside from current levels. For long-term investors that believe in the experience management market, this is the perfect stock to pick up. The next company on our list gives Amazon a run for its money, and that is Mercado Libre, ticker M-E-L-I. Mercado Libre is the largest digital payments and e-commerce platform in Latin America. You can basically think of it as the Amazon of Latin America. But in many ways, Mercado Libre is Amazon on steroids because they offer advertising, financing, and logistics support to their sellers. This means that sellers can get an entire end-to-end e-commerce solution in just one place. While this is very exciting and the company has a bright future, let's address some risks. The most obvious would be the fact that it is based in Latin America. Things like political and economic volatility are much more common in Latin America and present risks to the health of large companies. For example, in 2017, they had to suspend their Venezuelan operations due to political unrest that damaged their operations. This led to a loss of over $85 million. The other major risk is competition. Having Amazon as your main competitor means you're going up against arguably the largest and most powerful company in history. Amazon has been targeting Brazil more and more since 2012 when it first began selling books there. Brazil is such an important target because it has the largest largest population in Latin America with 200 million people. It is also one of the fastest growing in terms of e-commerce adoption, which has more than doubled in the last two years alone. Although Amazon only has 1% of the Brazilian market compared to Mercado Libre's 19%, Competing with Amazon always presents a risk in the future. There are a lot of reasons to believe in the future of Mercado Libre. First off, it is projected to hold 25% market share of one of the fastest growing markets in the world, Latin American e-commerce. Retail e-commerce sales in Latin America grew at more than 63% and totaled over $104 billion in 2020. Now this number is projected to hit $270 billion in 2021. If Mercado Libre is able to maintain even 15 or 20% market share, their growth would be exponential over the next few years. The company also has a very wide moat that is made up of two main competitive advantages. First, they would benefit from high switching costs, meaning that it would cost the seller money to switch from Mercado Libre to one of their competitors. For example, their monthly site traffic is nearly four times higher than the second closest competitor, which is, you guessed it, Amazon. So if you're a business owner trying to make decisions that would maximize your company's success, why would you ever choose the marketplace with less potential customers? The other main competitive advantage is that Mercado Libre benefits from a powerful network effect. As more merchants join, a wider variety of products is available, which attracts more customers to the marketplace, which in turn attracts more sellers because they have more customers to sell to. Over time, this creates a powerful cycle that widens the moat against other competitors. Arguably the most impressive part about this company 
company are its growth numbers. In their Q2 earnings results, the company reported year-over-year -year revenue growth of 154% to $1.4 billion, and their unique active user base grew by almost 62% to 70 million users. For the past 12 months, ending in March 2021, revenue was up 90% to $4.7 billion. I honestly don't think I've seen these types of percentages paired with billions in revenue. Comment below if I'm blanking on another company where you've seen this type of growth at this scale, but I just can't think of any other company that has put up numbers like this. Analysts have a median price target of $1,831.75 a share, which represents about a 17% upside from its current levels. The stock is down almost 18% over the last six months, meaning it could be a timely opportunity to scoop some shares. In my opinion, this stock will be a big winner for long-term investors. Next up is a company that flies under the radar most of the time but needs to be considered by long-term investors, and that is ABB Limited, ticker ABB. Based in Switzerland, ABB is one of the largest robotics companies in the world, specialized in making robots that are used in industrial plants and manufacturing. But this company has their hands everywhere. They have a fast-growing electric vehicle charging business and are leaders in the process automation, motion control, and electrification markets. The biggest risk for ABB is the fact that it is undergoing a big change in the way that it's being managed. Before the newest CEO, Bjorn, Horn Rosengren was hired in February of 2020, the company had a decade of underperformance despite most of its businesses being in a good position to succeed. From 2009 to 2019, earnings per share declined at an annual rate of 6%. Since the company is not even two years removed from that poor performance, we'll want to see consistent outperformance if they want to gain more trust from investors. Signs have been very positive since the beginning of 2020 but it's always something to keep in mind. Robotics will undoubtedly be a huge part of our future and ABB's products sit in the prime spot to serve the increasing demand. The robotics market recently hit $100 billion in 2020 and is expected to hit $210 billion by 2025. If ABB can continue to develop products that fit the market need and they're able to maintain their spot as the largest in the market, they'll be able to keep growing for years to come. ABB achieved $500 million in net savings in 2020 and projects another $300 million in net savings in 2021. Much of this is due to new strategies put in place by the new CEO, Bjorn Rosengren, but the numbers can get even more impressive when you look at their Q2 2021 earnings report. Revenue was up 21% to $7.45 billion and net profit margin was up 95% to 10.1%. Analysts are expecting ABB to grow its operating profit from $1.6 billion in 2020 to $4.3 billion in 2023. If the company is able to achieve that, there will be some serious upside to the stock. Even though all of this sounds really exciting, my approach to buying the stock will be a lot different from the others on this list. It actually has a downside price target, but this is likely because the stock has been on a run recently and is now hovering well above its 50-day moving average. So I'm going to be adding this stock to my watch list and dollar cost averaging a few shares, then buying more shares when and if the stock corrects closer towards its moving average. All this to say, the near term is not as clear, but ABB is set up well to reward long-term investors. Next up is a very low-key growth company in the HR software industry, and that is Paycom ticker PAYC. Paycom is a cloud-based platform that companies use to manage employee-related operations. Their HCM software and other products help reduce costs and increase efficiency for things like employee benefits, hiring tasks, expense accounts, and HR compliance. Thousands of companies across the globe trust Paycom, from the Fortune 500 to small and medium-sized businesses. Their main competitors are companies you may have heard of before, like ADP and Workday. There are a few major risks that Paycom cites in their 10K. First off, they mention that the market they play in is extremely competitive. The HR and payroll software industry is full of well-funded and highly capable companies that will continue to innovate and threaten Paycom's offerings. Currently, Workday and ADP have more market share, but Paycom is quickly gaining on them, which we'll touch on again in a moment. One of the other major risks the company mentions is their potential inability to offer customized offerings and features to larger companies. In the SaaS industry, it's pretty common for companies to ask for custom features in exchange for paying list price for the product. But as Paycom continues to grow and scale its business, it will be harder and harder to offer this to companies. They say that this could hurt their ability to continue to attract larger companies in the future. But there are risks with every investment, and there are even more reasons to be bullish on Paycom. First, it has one of the highest net profit margins in all of SaaS at almost 24% net profit margin. They've been able to keep their gross margin steady around 85% over the last three years, while their main competitors, ADP and Workday, were at 72 and 42% respectively last year. In its most recent quarterly earnings report, the company reported revenue growth of 12% 
$272 million, they also reported that 98% of that revenue was recurring. This means that 98% of their revenue is running on annual renewing contracts, which makes the company's revenue very predictable, and investors love predictability. On top of this, they reported an incredible 93% client retention rate. Typically in the SaaS industry, anything over 90% is considered world-class. There is also something to be said about the company's leadership. The founder and CEO, Chad Richeson, still runs the business after 20 years and holds nearly 14% of the stock. Richeson also has a 94% approval rating and raving reviews on Glassdoor. To add to this, the market they play in is only growing from here. The human capital management industry is expected to be worth nearly 25 billion by 2025, meaning that in the long term, there will be room for multiple competitors in the space. The good news is that Paycom has been increasing revenue faster than Workday and ADP over the last three years. Analysts have set a median price target of $431.20 a share, which implies just under an 8% upside in the short term. The stock is still down almost 7% year to date and down a little over 15% from its 52 week high of $471, meaning it might be a good time to scoop up a few shares for the long term. The final stock on our list plays in one of the largest markets in the United States, and that is Redfin, ticker RDFN. Residential real estate home sales totaled $1.9 trillion in transaction volume in 2020, and that number is only expected expected to rise over the coming years, and Redfin's business is in the perfect place to ride this trend. They offer an end-to-end -end real estate brokerage where home buyers can use Redfin for brokerage, mortgage, and closing services. Then on the other side of the home buying process, they offer brokerage services to home sellers. They recently launched a platform called Redfin Now, which allows buyers and sellers the opportunity to do all cash deals without the middleman. As always, let's address a few risks first. Redfin's market is full of established and well-run companies. The first that comes to mind is Zillow. In the first nine months of 2020, 25% of homes bought and sold online were using Zillow. With almost $3 billion in revenue and by far the most unique visitors in the market, right now nearly 75% of the market is split between Opendoor and Zillow, so Redfin has its work cut out for itself. The second biggest risk is putting too much into their new product, Redfin Now, too quickly. There's much more risk on that side of the business and it would be a lot easier for them to get into balance sheet trouble while they're trying to scale the Redfin Now offering. So let's get to the good stuff about this stock. First of all, they had an awesome Q1 earnings report in March. Their reported revenue was up over 40% year over year to nearly $270 million, which puts them on pace to blow past a billion dollars in revenue for the first time in their history. In addition to this, they reported that their net profit was up almost 60%, which shows they are headed in the right direction. And since 2015, they have nearly tripled their share of all home sales from 0.44% to 1.14%. Redfin also has a very durable competitive advantage baked into their business model. Redfin agents are employees that earn salaries, not independent contractors who work for commission. This allows them to charge home sellers lower commissions overall, and Redfin commissions range from 1 to 1.5% compared to the industry average of 2.5 to 3%. At a glance, this may seem meaningless, but it can save sellers thousands of dollars. For example, if you were selling your home for $350,000, Going through Redfin may cost you around $3,500 in commission fees, while the traditional route may cost you up to $10,500 in commission fees. So if a seller can put seven grand back in their pocket, why would they ever use anyone else? Analysts have a median price target of $70.23 a share, representing nearly 24% upside. The stock is down 30% over the last six months and nearly 15% year to date, meaning that it could be a great time for long-term investors to scoop up Redfin at a cheaper price. Thank you so much for watching until the end. If you want to learn more about how I research and pick stocks, check out this video that goes step-by-step -step on how to pick stocks that went over the long-term. Click on that and I'll see you over there.